Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll show you how you can easily share any of your HDMI media content with multiple locations on your network at the same time. Now normally an HDMI extender like this is a one-to-one -one relationship, but there are several models that can be a one-to-many relationship, which means a single transmitter connected to a media source can distribute the same media content to multiple locations at the same time over your network. And that product allows you to send that media content to an upstairs bedroom or downstairs in the den. Or if you're at a trade show, you can actually replicate that same content across multiple monitors. Now, what I'd like to do in this video is to start off with a basic understanding of how the product works. And then I'll take a closer look at this particular model and explain the connections and indicators so you understand how to use it. And then I'll do a quick demonstration to show you just how easy it'll be to set this product up in a one-to-one -one relationship and a one-to-many relationship so you can see how easy it is to use. And then I'll point out a few things that you should be looking for if you're interested in an HDMI extender kit that again has a one-to-one -one and a one-to-many relationship. So an HDMI extender basically takes an HDMI signal and converts it to some type of transport technology for the connection between the primary and secondary locations. And you can use a Wi-Fi connection for that, a LAN connection for that, a coaxial cable, or a fiber optic cable, which gives you great distances. But the most common is a LAN connection between the primary and secondary locations, typically a CAT6 or a CAT7 cable, because it's easy to run, they're inexpensive, and it's pretty common in most homes. Matter of fact, most homes being wired today already have some type of internal LAN connection pretty much in every room that terminates in a basement or in a garage. So this is a great solution if you have a house like that. But essentially, that HDMI signal is converted into a different style of signal that can be sent across that LAN cable and then convert it back into an HDMI signal at the remote location so you can view it on a monitor. And there are other features involved as well, but that's the basic functionality of how an HDMI extender works. Now what makes this kit different is that same transmitter can distribute that over your network through a switch to multiple receivers at the same time, and you can enjoy that same content and again, multiple rooms in your home. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at both of the modules and explain the connections and indicators, and then I'll do that demonstration and point out a few things you should be looking for when you're uh, in the market for an HDMI extender that can distribute the same content to multiple locations. The O-Ray UHD-EXM 500-K HDMI extension kit can be configured in a one-to-one -one relationship or a one-to-many by simply adding additional receivers on your network. The product features a full metal enclosure, which makes it incredibly durable and helps to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the electronics inside. I'll start with the transmitter module. On either side, you'll find ventilation slots that allow any heat that develops during operation to escape. You'll also find mounting holes on both sides that can be used with a bracketing kit to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way. On the front of the unit, starting on the left, you'll find a reset button. That can be used to reset the module if needed once power is applied by simply holding that button in for a few seconds. To the right of that is a power indicator. The minute you add power to the unit, it goes through a power on self-test where it checks all the electronics to make sure they're working correctly. And once it passes that test, it'll light that LED letting you know it's ready to use. To the right of that is an activity indicator. When you add power to the transmitter and the receiver, connect the LAN cable between them, and connect this to a media device, this unit will start sending that HDMI media content across that LAN cable, and this LED will come on letting you know you've got a solid connection to the remote location and that you're transmitting data. Under normal operation, both the power and the activity LED should be lit. This product also allows you to control it through RS-232, and you can connect this to a local computer to control the unit. You can also pass those RS-232 control signals to the remote location by connecting here. To the right of that is a micro USB port labeled upgrade, and that's for upgrading the firmware on the module later on if needed by simply connecting this to a computer and moving the firmware file over to the module. On the rear of the unit, you'll find a series of connections. On the left-hand side, you'll find an infrared out port this unit provides infrared blaster control where essentially it'll pick up the remote control signals from the remote location and pass those back over the LAN connection to the primary location where they're rebroadcast. So in the kit you'll find an infrared in and an infrared out module. You want to plug the infrared out module in right there. To the right of that is a full-sized HDMI port labeled HDMI in. This connects to whatever media device you'd like to share the content from with your remote location. 
To the right of that is an HDMI output port. This product also provides local loopback functionality, which again allows you to enjoy the content here that you're distributing to your remote locations. And to use that feature, you can simply connect the monitor to this HDMI port. Always use a high quality HDMI cable for these connections. To the right of that is a LAN port. That's where one end of the CAT6 or CAT7 LAN cable plugs in between this transmitter and the receiver. And finally, to the right of that is a power port, and that's used with the included power supply. You'll simply plug that into a wall outlet. The other end of the cable has a barrel connection on it, which plugs in right there. The receiver module is very similar. Again, full metal enclosure, ventilation on both sides, mounting holes for the bracketing kits. On the front of the unit, you'll find another reset button, power indicator, activity indicator, RS-232 connection port, upgrade port to the right of that. So again, very similar connections and indicators. On the rear, you'll find an infrared in port, and that's where the other module plugs in. And it's really important you plug the right module into the receiver and the right module into the transmitter. To the right of that is another LAN port, and that's where the other end of that CAT6 or CAT7 cable plugs in from the transmitter module. To the right of that, another full-sized HDMI port, and this connects to a monitor at the remote location that you'd like to use to enjoy the content. And finally, to the right of that is another DC port for the second power supply. You'll plug that into a wall outlet at the remote location and plug the barrel connection in there, and that'll provide all the power you'll need for operation. Now I'll show you just how easy it'll be to use a product like this with your own equipment. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up a small media player that's currently looping a video on this monitor, and that's the media content I'd like to share with my remote locations. Over here I've set up two monitors. These represent two different remote locations where I'd like to enjoy the content, and these can be up to 120 meters away from the primary side. In front of me I have the transmitter here and the receiver module here. Now the first set of connections I'll make are to the transmitter module, and I'll start by disconnecting the media player from my monitor and plugging that cable directly into the HDMI input port on the back of the transmitter. And now I can add power. I've already plugged in the power supply. The other end of the cable has a barrel connection on it, which plugs directly into the DC input port on the back of the unit. And now we're ready to connect up the receiver at one of my remote locations. I'll start with the bottom monitor. I've already connected a high-speed HDMI cable to the monitor, and that plugs into the HDMI output port on the receiver. And now we can add power. I've plugged in the second power supply. That barrel connection, again, into the DC input port on the back of the unit. Now, the minute I add power, both of these modules have started their internal power on self-test where they're checking the electronics. The transmitter is also checking the resolution of my media device, and the receiver is checking the resolution of the monitor. So once I make the connection between them, they can negotiate to give you the best possible picture on that output monitor. The only thing we're missing at this point is the LAN connection between them. It has to be a CAT6 or a CAT7. I have a CAT6 cable right here, it's a short one, but these can be up to 120 meters apart. So I'll plug this into the receiver and the other end of it into the transmitter. And the minute I make this connection, they handshake and negotiate that resolution, and any second you'll see that media content show up on the remote monitor. There you go. So what you're viewing here is content from the primary side that's been converted into a signal that can be sent across the LAN cable, then convert it back into an HDMI signal for display on the monitor. Now one feature that's really nice about this particular kit is the local loopback functionality which allows me to continue to enjoy the content here while I'm sharing it with a remote location. And to use that feature, you'll need an additional HDMI cable, which I have right here, and you'll plug that into the HDMI output port on the transmitter, and the other end of that into the local monitor. And the nice thing about this feature is again, I can see the content at the primary site while I'm distributing it to my remote locations. And again, it takes a second for it to readjust for the resolution of the two monitors, and you'll see that same display come up on both of these. There it is on the primary side, and there it is on the remote location. Now again, this is a one-to-one -one relationship that I've set up here, a single transmitter to a single receiver, but this kit allows you to have multiple receivers that can display the same content from the transmitter. And to do that, you'll need a switch like this. This is a one gig switch because you've got to distribute that same LAN signal to multiple receivers. And you'll also need another receiver like this one. So I'll plug this into the top monitor. I've already plugged in the power supply. And I have to break the connection between the primary and secondary locations and plug this into the switch. And then all I have to do at that point is add the two receivers to the same switch using two more LAN connections. 
and then that same signal will be distributed to both of the receivers at the same time and you'll see the same image come up on both of these monitors. All right. Again, it takes a second for the handshake to take place. Once that does, you'll see the image pop up over here. It was just that quick, and there it is on the primary side. And you'll notice they're in sync because this system is extremely sophisticated in the way it sends that signal across the LAN, and it really is just that simple to get it working. I hope that closer look and demonstration were helpful. Now here are a few really important things to keep in mind when you're comparing one HDMI extender kit to another to make sure you get the best value for your money and you find a kit that works for your particular setup. The first thing you want to be concerned with is the type of resolution the product can support. In this case, it can fully support 4K ultra high definition media content at up to 60 frames a second. And that's really a pretty high resolution at a high frame rate for most media content today. There are kits on the market that will support 8K content as well, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive and the distance for the extension is a little bit shorter. The next thing to keep in mind is how far you can actually extend that primary and secondary locations. In this case, up to 120 meters between the primary location and each of the remote locations. So if you've got an upstairs bedroom, 120 meters between the primary and that bedroom. If you have a downstairs den, again, another 120 meters there. So it gives you a lot of flexibility of where you can locate those secondary monitors. A lot of kits on the market have a shorter distance or they have a lower resolution that they support. So those two are the first things you should check. The next thing is the type of cable that's being used. A lot of the newer kits require a higher quality LAN cable. For example, CAT6 or CAT7. This kit can work with a CAT6, CAT7, or even a CAT8 cable. So whatever you've got in your home that's already wired, you can use this. If you don't have any LAN wiring in your home, again, it's a very easy cable to obtain. Some come with connectors on it, so you can plug it into the primary, route it to the secondary location, and plug it into the receiver. Another important feature that would be really beneficial is a feature called local loopback, which essentially at the primary location allows you to distribute that content to remote locations and still view it at the primary location. So this particular kit has a local loopback functionality, which allows me to connect the monitor at the primary location to enjoy the content that I'm distributing to my remote locations. Another important feature would be infrared blaster kits. And what they do essentially is from the remote location, there's a receiver module that picks up the remote control signals from that location and send those back to the primary location over that same LAN cable where they're rebroadcast so you can essentially remotely control the content you're watching, which is really important because if you don't have that feature, you'll basically start your media content here and then have to run to the room to watch it. You won't have any control over it. Another important thing to keep in mind is both the HDMI and the HDCP certifications because they control a lot of the functionality of what type of media you can transmit and what kind of copy protection it'll support. So the HDMI standard has gone through a lot of changes in recent years. A lot of new features have been introduced like CEC and other features that you'll want to take advantage of. So knowing you're on the latest version of HDMI really makes a big difference. This particular kit is HDMI 2.0 compliant, which is great for 4K content. The other standard is the HDCP standard, which controls copy protection, and that's equally important because if you have an older version of HDCP on the product, you won't be able to play certain files. So this product fully supports HDCP 2.2, which again is the latest version for 4K content. One other feature I'd like to mention is a power over cable technology, which essentially means a single power supply at either location is all you'll need to operate the entire kit. Now, if you're distributing to multiple locations, you need to make sure that your switch is also power over cable compliant. But if you're doing a one-to-one -one relationship and you can find a kit that provides power over cable, that will greatly simplify your wiring. And that's pretty much it for this kit. So hopefully you found this review helpful. And again, until next time, thanks for watching.